Czech animator Jiří Trinka was one of the most influential animators to come out of Europe in the 20th century, as well as one of the first to challenge the mainstream Disney style. There was very little animation that preceded him in his home country, so he's often called the father of Czech animation. Trinka used many different methods, including cell and cutout animation, but mainly focused on stop-motion animation using puppets he made himself, usually from wood. He also often combined animation techniques or live action in the same film. Trinka was very particular about how his puppets appeared on film. They didn't have changing facial expressions, and instead he used lighting, music, and blocking to establish character. Generally, his films were very light on dialogue, or lacking it entirely, and the soundtracks were mostly narration and music. Trinka's work had many common themes, such as a focus on tradition, history, folklore, and peasants. He made films for both adults and children, but his work was much more mature and adult-focused than you may expect given the use of puppets. Trinka explored many different genres, such as western, sci-fi, fantasy, and horror. His films could be both serious and comedic, and he mainly adapted literature, both from foreign writers like Shakespeare and Chekhov, and from Czech authors and folktales. His directorial career began in 1945, with Grandpa Planted a Beat, which, like all of his early films, used traditional animation. The dialogue-free color animation adapted a Czech fairy tale. The simple story is of a family all working together to achieve a goal. The pets pitch in, and even a tiny mouse, with the clear message that everyone is important, no matter how small or seemingly insignificant. Trinka continued with another traditionally animated Czech fairy tale adaptation called The Animals and the Robbers. This too had no dialogue, but did include narration. This was Trinka's first work to be recognized outside of Czechoslovakia and won a prize at the Cannes Film Festival. Trinka took a surreal turn with The Gift, a satirical short film that was ahead of its time and therefore wasn't popular with critics. It mocks film producers specifically, but also just the bourgeoisie in general. The Gift begins with live action, the first of many Trinka films that combine live action with animation. After that, Trinka took on the Nazis with Spring Man and the SS, or its alternative title, The Chimney Sweep, one of Trinka's few works in black and white. The title character is a superhero that uses springs to gain superhuman jumping abilities based on an urban legend folk hero from Prague during the German occupation. The short mocks the Nazis with the paranoid SS officer, who interprets an innocent tool shop's logo as the communist hammer and sickle, and thinks a slipping old man is doing the iconic Russian squat dance. There's even seemingly an implication that two of the officers are gay lovers when they are shown holding hands on a park bench. Despite the subject matter, the short is lighthearted and humorous. It used traditional animation combined with photographs and contained no dialogue. In 1947, Trinka directed his first feature, The Czech Year. With this film, he starts to take on his signature style, and from now on, he mostly creates stop-motion animation using puppets. However, this does include some 2D animation sometimes even in the same shot as the puppets, and Trinka combined the two throughout his career. Made up of several mostly independent chapters, the Czech year portrays life over the course of a year in a village, showcasing traditional customs, dances, costumes, and food. We see the everyday labor of the common people with scenes like peasants baking desserts. Stylistically, the film is pretty interesting, often using multiple exposure with sometimes trippy results. Trinka extensively uses a moving camera, and the editing is sometimes quite rapid. There are also impressive weather effects like rain and lightning. In a metafictional touch, we even get a puppet show put on by the puppets, but unlike the characters in the film, we can see their strings. The entire film contains no dialogue or narration, only songs. The Czech year was a critically praised international success, even winning an award at the Venice Film Festival. Trinka followed that up with another feature called The Emperor's Nightingale, which is relatively faithful to the Hans Christian Andersen story it adapts. There's a live-action frame story of a spoiled rich boy, but the main plot is about a Chinese child emperor. He lives among mechanical recreations of natural things, such as mechanical swans, and in a stuffy court with lots of rules. He then becomes enamored with a real Nightingale song, before it's replaced by an artificial one. The theme of the film is the natural world versus artifice, and Trinka clearly takes the side of the natural. Artificial things are beautiful, but sterile and predictable, illustrated by how the mechanical bird's song is perfect every time, but never changes. Trinka again uses lots of moving camera, and no on-screen dialogue, but this does have narration. 
The Emperor's Nightingale was distributed internationally, and the English version has narration from horror icon Boris Karloff. Next, there's Story of the Bass Cello, a 1949 dialogue-free comedic short adapted from Chekhov. It depicts two people that go swim naked and then get their clothes stolen, and humorously the cellist keeps his top hat on while swimming. The film has some interesting stylistic quirks, like extreme distortion of the image to portray shock at seeing the woman naked. Another comedic short from Trinka in 1949 was Song of the Prairie, which affectionately parodies the Western genre, specifically Stagecoach and other John Ford films. It's full of cliché Western characters, like an absurdly confident hero with a white hat. The characters sing, and for the first time in Trinka's work, their lips move in sync with the vocals. Song of the Prairie is one of his more accessible works that is very easy to understand. Trinka provides a remarkably realistic depiction of moving at a fast speed, with clothes and hair fluttering in the wind. This was yet another international success for him, and won festival awards in Australia and the UK. Trinka's short The Devil's Mill was also humorous, but sort of a horror film as the devil himself appears as a character. Set in the countryside among peasant houses on a moonlit night, The Devil's Mill is yet another Trinka film where music is important, as the main character plays an organ and produces a polka that makes people unable to resist the urge to dance. Again, there is no dialogue, but with this and Song of the Prairie, Trinka started to use sound effects and not just music. Trinka returned to features in 1950 with Prince Bayaya, based on Czech fairy tales. The titular hero is a peasant, and the film has lots of medieval tropes like drawbridges over a moat and jousting tournaments, as well as magical elements like a talking horse and a sword imbued with supernatural power. Each part begins with a storybook-style drawing that comes to life, which does a great job of setting the mood. Environments are inspired by Gothic and Renaissance paintings and Czech book illuminators. Trinka includes some skillfully animated action scenes, like the hero fighting a dragon with multiple heads. There's very little dialogue, as none of the humans speak, just the horse, and the rest of the story is told through song. The next year, Trinka directed The Merry Circus, a 2D animated short using cutouts. This is one of his slightest works, with basically no story or moral. His short The Golden Fish was also two-dimensional, but used limited animation, with the drawing static and motion coming only through camera movement. There's also no dialogue, just a narrator. Then in 1953, Trinka released what is usually considered to be his magnum opus, the feature film Old Czech Legends. The mythical epic is his most technically impressive puppet film so far, and the one with the largest scope out of all his filmography. The episodic film is based mainly on a book from 1894 titled Ancient Bohemian Legends, and tells the story of the legendary forefather of the Czech people and his successors. The book was an important part of the Czech national revival, which aimed to revive the Czech national identity after centuries of Habsburg domination. So given Trinka's clear love of his homeland, it's not at all surprising he chose to adapt this. This is the first Trinka film where puppets speak, but they don't move their lips in sync, and instead speakers are shown from behind. The story is still mostly told through narration and songs. Again, the stop motion shows technical mastery, especially in the complex climactic battle with dozens of puppets fighting with bows, axes, and swords. Old Czech Legends portrays a pre-Christian world with fairies, pagan references to sun and thunder gods, and people making sacrifices. The film contains very little humor, and is easily one of the most serious in Trinka's filmography. After that, for the short How the Old Man Traded It All Away, Trinka returned to 2D limited animation with static drawings. It's about a peasant who finds a fortune, and just used narration with no dialogue. His next short, Two Little Frosts, combines two-dimensional animation and puppets, to tell the silly story of two ghosts who cause trouble. The paper cutout ghosts speak, but the peasant human puppets do not. His next feature film, The Good Soldier Schweik, was one of the few Trinka works set in modern times, albeit still a period piece. It was adapted from a novel about a Czech soldier in World War I. The title character is an everyman type that gets into comedic hijinks that fluster his superior officers, and the subversive film uses these situations to mock the military. Trinka again combines puppets with 2D animation, specifically paper cutouts, and also uses photographs. The Good Soldier Schweik is in three parts and has quite a bit of dialogue for Trinka. Trinka's 1959 short Why UNESCO is entirely traditional animation, 
and was made to explain the need for the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, which was created in 1945. Trinka adapted Shakespeare for his final feature-length film, A Midsummer Night's Dream. This was his first in widescreen, a format that had only been widespread for a few years. Trinka was skeptical of widescreen, but knew it would assist in distribution, so he shot it in both widescreen and academy ratio. The puppets were made of plastic this time, not wood, and the characters are all varied and well-defined. For example, Titania has huge doe eyes and a dress train made of fairies and flowers. In a daring move, Trinka included none of Shakespeare's dialogue, instead focusing on narration and the visuals to give us a dreamlike, balletic adaptation. Characters are transparent in parts, adding to the dreamlike atmosphere. Besides just cutting the dialogue, Trinka makes some other changes, like making the play within the play of Pyramus and Thisbe more dramatic and less silly. A Midsummer Night's Dream was very popular at home, and while it won awards at festivals like Cannes and Venice, it got a mixed reception internationally. Trinka's 1962 short Passion warns the audience about the dangers of drunk or reckless driving by showing an impatient man from birth to his untimely death. The film foregoes realism with highly stylized backgrounds and absurd touches like using chess pieces as fuel, with the pieces all being knights and a possible pun on horsepower. Trinka mixes the puppets with cutout animation and uses live action footage and photographs. Unusually for Trinka, a puppet does change its facial expression when the baby's eyebrows move to convey anger. Also from 1962, the cybernetic grandma was Trinka's first foray into sci-fi, with a bit of horror mixed in as well. The short is set in a surreal dystopia where machines have taken over many aspects of life. The title character is a frightening, mostly faceless, robotic grandmother that wants to replace a little girl's flesh-and-blood peasant grandma. The robot says comforting things, but its behavior is controlling and abusive, and is literally a chair with doilies in a twisted imitation of a grandmother. The short tells a dark story, but does have a heartwarming ending. The cybernetic grandma is similar to the Emperor's Nightingale in celebrating the natural world over artificiality. The countryside has been robbed of its natural beauty, and modernity has alienated humans from nature. There's some unusual futuristic technology, like a record player that plays photographs and acts like a telephone, and even delivery drones. Fitting in with the subject matter, there's a warbly electronic soundtrack. A few years later, Trinka put out Archangel Gabriel and Mistress Goose, set in medieval Venice and based on a story from the Decameron. A priest pretends to be the angel Gabriel in order to sleep with a woman. The short has a prologue with cutout animation before the main story told with puppets. Trinka makes fun of the church and religious hypocrisy, and includes some funny little touches like a portrait of Martin Luther making an angry face the protagonist. Trinka's final film, and his most well-known outside of Czechoslovakia, was The Hand. The subversive short is a clear analogy for government control over an artist, and is definitely Trinka's darkest. A sculptor is ordered by a disembodied hand to make likenesses of the hand, but he refuses and just wants to make pots for flowers. The hand is seemingly omnipotent, driving home the metaphor for authoritarianism. Also at one point, the hand brings in a television and forces him to watch propaganda. The artist is eventually caged and forced to make the sculptures against his will. He's given medals, similar to how Trinka had just been named the national artist by the Czechoslovakian government, despite not being allowed to make an adaptation of Don Quixote years prior. Like with passion, Trinka abandons any sense of realism here, as the potter's house exists in a black void and space transforms impossibly. Matching up the live-action hand with stop-motion in the same frame must have been quite difficult to pull off. Also, it was a fitting end to Trinka's career to cap it off with a film entirely free of any dialogue or narration. The government banned the film after Trinka's death for 20 years, basically proving Trinka's point. Trinka left a massive influence on the world of animation, and many filmmakers have said they were fans of his or followed in his footsteps. His traditional animation was an obvious and admitted influence on some of the other early alternative to Disney, like the American studio UPA and the Zagreb school in Yugoslavia. Stop motion animation became quite common among Czech filmmakers, and Trinka inspired later figures like Jan Schwankmeier and Jerzy Barta, as well as those outside of his home country, like the experimental director's brothers Quay. Others who have praised Trinka ranged from the French avant-garde director Jean Cocteau to Rebecca Sugar, 
creator of the 2010's Cartoon Network show Steven Universe. Basically, all of his films are available to watch for free online, either on YouTube or on the Internet Archive. That's all for this video. If there are any other animators or topics you'd like to see me cover, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.